Welcome to Safe Space, where live questions are talked about from Christians' perspectives. Today, we have Dr. Alex Tan with us. He's the founder and director of Kairos Spiritual Formation Ministries, formed in 1998, which serves as a ministry for preaching and teaching about spiritual formation and transformation in churches, camps, seminars, and Bible seminaries. In 2003, he also started the Spiritual Formation Institute at the Holy Light Church in Johor Bahru, which he is currently serving as an elder. He also teaches practical theology at MBS, STM and East Asia School of Technology in Singapore. Now, Dr. Alex wrote widely and frequently and has contributed much of his thoughts to several magazines such as Asian Beacon. And most of his books are being sold in Christian bookstores and they include topics that we are going to discuss today. But writing and teaching are not his full-time job. Dr. Alex is a real physician. In fact, a senior consultant pediatrician at the KBJ Johor Specialist Hospital, JB. So today we are very, very honoured to have him with us on the show. So welcome to Safe Space, Dr. Alex. Yeah, uh, uh, How's your journey from JB to our studio here today? Not bad. Not bad? <laughs> uh, a good nap along the way. Wow, mm. time to nap. Now, I also heard that you are a big Star Trek fan. Can you tell the audience which character is your favourite? Well, uh, everybody would expect me to say Spock. <laughs> Mine <laughs> but, is Spock. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <coughs> but my favorite is a uh, uh, Surai. Oh. Okay. Surai okay. is a, is like <coughs> the uh, the founder of is like Albert Einstein to us. Mm, mm, mm. So he's the founder of the uh, Vulcan philosophy. I see. Of uh, repressing your emotions and balance harmony. All right. Oh, so that's your favorite character. Mm. Okay. Mine is Spock, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> now, besides that, your special interests also include biomedical ethics, mm -hmm. and you have written two books that deal specifically with biotechnology issues. First one, on euthanasia in 2005. I love that title, by the way, A Good Day to Die. And the second one in 2006, Leave and Let Leave, which uh, deals with abortion, stem cell, and etc. Now, since they were written more than 10 years ago, and there have been um, rapid changes ever since. Have any of your thoughts about these issues undergo significant change? And um, to be frank, la, are these books outdated? Should we still buy your books or should we uh, wait until we revise these books? Well, uh, please buy my books. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I need to leave. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, basically, uh, I was you know, just going through the books and uh, I like the, I still like the book, The Good Day to Die, mm. because uh, even after all these years, mm. the thoughts and uh, concepts that go into writing it, I think it's still valid. Okay, and mm. uh, I, I like the title A Good Day to Die because it comes from the Vulcan, mm. uh, the Klingon oh, uh, yeah, in yeah, Star yeah. Trek. Wow. Uh, okay, and, uh, and I display it in my clinic, so can, you can imagine that people walk into my clinic and say, <laughs> a good day to die. <laughs> that gave them a shock. <laughs> yes. But I always believe that, I mean, the basic uh, uh, philosophy behind writing this book is that when I deal with uh, people who are dying and all that, there are a lot of questions, mm. and uh, especially for Christians. And uh, we talk about euthanasia, which mm. is actually this book about. Mm, mm, mm. And uh, basically, a good day to die is the day that God chose for you to die. Mm, mm. Okay, so that's the whole idea behind this all book. Alright, alright. Okay, so, yeah, uh, I may uh, revise or have a new version, mm, mm. but I don't think it would make, uh, it will be very different from the old. Okay. Because the technology has not changed much. Mm, mm. Maybe a bit more comment on what the uh, advances in the, uh, on or yeah. what has happened in Eugenesia mm. in the last, uh, uh, 13 years or so. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. So, in this second book, Live and Let Live, mm -hmm. okay, uh, basically I talk about biotechnology. Mm. Okay, and uh, again, you find that in the last 13 years, a lot of uh, changes. In fact, this is a very fast expanding field yep. of biotechnology. We have yeah. stem cell research, we have gene, ed gene editing, uh, CRISPRs, and all that. Yeah. But again, the philosophy or what I taught the biblical stand remains the same. Okay, okay. So then in other words, do things have changed, the basic idea on how we as Christians should behave, mm -hmm. 
how to we adapt and adjust to this technology okay. remains the same. Okay, that's great. So uh, continue to buy his books. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Later on, we will um, include uh, how you can get these books. Now, when it comes to technological advances that could reduce human suffering, um, improve health and reduce disease, we are generally all in favour. Um, but recent advances in a new biotechnology, such as reproductive technologies, stem cell therapies and cloning are often seen as exceptions. Basically, there were a lot of people saying that we shouldn't go that area, citing them as unethical. Uh, would you fill us in, Doctor, in, um, on the current trending issues on bioethics? Um, bioethics is actually a, a evolving mm. thing because of the rapid change in technology yep. in uh, treatment modalities. At this moment, uh, what I see is uh, as uh, this con that concerns me in biotech is the role of the big pharma okay. or the big pharmaceutical companies, which mm. are beginning bigger and bigger, mm. and they begin to control the market. Mm. Okay, in terms of the marketing and the selling of drugs, yep. so uh, medications and all that. So that is a big concern. Okay. The second concern I have is a trend is the the uh, independence of uh, research, especially oh. primary research, because most universities are short of funds. Mm -mm. So who is funding all this research? But yeah. uh, people with agendas. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not saying that uh, scientists are not independent, mm -hmm. but who pays the money? Mm -hmm. And the third one, in the which I'm very interested in because I'm doing research, in it is what I call the digital patient. Okay. You know the use of IT computer and our uh, 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 humanity. All right. Okay. So, so that will be a big concern. How oh. much of, you know, we are, all of us are being digitalized. Mm. Okay. So instead of a real person, are we did, can we treat a digital person? Wow. You know? So that is uh, the ethics of that is uh, one of the areas. Uh, so okay. this, these are the trends. And the fourth one is uh, euthanasia. Mm. Okay. And I believe that that will be the next big issue in the mm. next uh, two or three years. Okay. Okay, because uh, it's part of this uh, uh, agenda that you know, first you have the LGBT, mm -mm -mm. then after that, uh, euthanasia. Okay. But it's euthanasia has been talked about or debated about, mm. um, like you know your book, yeah. more than ten years ago. Already mm. talk about it. Mm. Uh, so you are saying is is making a comeback? Yes, it will be make a comeback in a big way wow, uh, okay. because this is now have, have the whole uh, lobby mm. okay, in a very systemic way okay. which has actually uh, won the LGBT mm. Uh, uh, mm. Uh, their role now in society mm. and they, uh, there will be countries after countries will be pushing for it All right. okay, we have in Canada and recently okay. in Australia All right. uh, so more and more states are, are considering I and see. the people are asking and demanding. Mm. Yes, all this is the, the trend that the uh, autonomy is king. Mm. Yeah, I decide what to do with my body. Yep. And the yep. state better follow what I say. Mm. Okay, so mm -hmm. it's making a comeback. Mm. Um, how about these um, uh, terms that we always hear called the restoration, mm -hmm. restorative? Uh, mm. and enhancing therapy. Mm. Um, there seems to be a distinction, right? Mm. Now, can you elaborate more on these terms? Are they always as clear-cut between these two different uh, therapy? Uh, they actually is uh, quite clear-cut because, I mean, restorative is what we, we do, you see. When you're sick, you go to the hospital, mm -hmm. we fix you up, so that's mm -hmm. restorative. Mm -hmm. And enhancing is that we make you better. Okay. Okay, so when we talk about enhancing, mostly we think of about uh, athletes taking drugs to enhance okay. their uh, yeah. abilities. Mm. But we also talk uh, now thinking about artificial hips, okay? uh, artificial, artificial limbs. Okay. Okay. That also enhance uh, our okay. ability to move when you are sick and then replace them if you have lost bones and all that. Okay. So yeah. when these people who talk about uh, ethics in applying this therapy, they mm. are normally uh, against the enhancing therapy, is it? Or mm, the, uh, I think it depends on uh, what you're doing it for. Okay. For example, if you are, say, an athlete, 
So they will say that oh, you're taking steroids will give you the additional boost of energy and mm. when you need the burst of energy. So that is unethical at this moment. Mm. But what if everybody <laughs> takes uh, at this theorize. moment, I uh, like the way you say that. No, I, I believe that maybe in the future it mm. may be allowed. Because everybody is taking it. Yes. All right. Okay. So so what was once exception becomes the rule. Correct. Okay. And and we know that we there is a certain gene that makes certain people better athlete. Okay. Mm. Because they enhance their energy, uh, their metal con- uh, 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 mm. is more uh, efficient. I see. So do we screen all athletes and say we ban these people is because it's genetically unfair? Yeah, and okay. it couldn't even be an athlete fault because maybe their parents who decided they are born with it. Exactly, yeah. right? Uh, so so that means the the field is evolving as you see. Okay, mm. but we are if we are not if we leave about competitive sports and all that aside, then maybe uh, enhancing for a matter of a uh, a person who has a. Uh, hip injury. Mm. Okay, so we we give him a artif- give him or her artificial hip. Okay, and mm. then increase the mobility. That's enhancing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we make it better. Mm. What is extremely important. Yeah. Then uh, when you talk about restorative, yes, we are doing restorative, but there's a new uh, term coming out called regenerative. Okay. Okay. That means not only we restore, but we can grow new one. Okay, mm. like a new kidney. All right. Okay. A new uh, heart. But when it grows new one, isn't that enhancing instead of restoring? Because restore almost seems like you have an old one, you restore it, mm-hmm. maybe better, mm. right? So that's why I'm saying it's like, it's not so clear cut as to like, we can say this therapy is definitely just restore. Mm. It can also cut a little bit to sound, sounds a little bit enhancing. In, in a way, it, it sort of uh, <laughs> uh, uh, interact with each other. Because, uh, Actually, I, I, I'm, uh, I teach in a medical school. Mm. Okay, so I always tell my students that you are uh, very, very lucky to be, in a, in, to be a doctor at this time. Mm. Because this is the beginning of the age of regenerative medicine. Mm. Because we will be growing new kidney, new hearts. Wow. So it's not really uh, restorative mm. okay, or enhancing, mm. it's replacement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's like our car tire, you know, we are replacing it with another new one when yeah. it's, when it's yeah. dead or yeah. you know, not usable anymore. Yeah. So, so this age of uh, new generative medicine will be, you can see that there will be new therapies, okay? there will be targeted mm. uh, uh, treatment, okay? not only replacement of mm. our business, but other things. Okay. Uh, so, so it's a very exciting time to be in. It is, right? Mm. Yeah. Unfortunately, they can't replace the brain yet. Mm. You never know <laughs> <laughs> from the way the trend is going. Yes. Yeah. So those people who lobby um, against some of this um, enhancing or some therapy that seems to be suspicious in their terms, how much of their concerns are really of safety? Like, because if you continue this, right, uh, there are risks involved in this therapy. Mm. Uh, maybe life will be in danger. Or... Uh, is it just about safety issue or is it about ethics issue? Um. Uh, because when we say safety issues, many uh, or all of the products or technology mm. will be tested mm. okay, before they are used. Okay. Okay, so it's not so much of safety because if it's not safe, then it would not be allowed mm. to mm. be used for public. Okay. 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 Uh, a lot of uh, pe- uh, people have problems with uh, the new technologies is because of preconceived ideas mm. that anything, some, some people have this thing of anything new is bad. Mm, okay. okay, so you know, we are okay with what we thought, why should we have something new? Yeah. Okay, and, and how enhancing would that be? Mm, mm. So, so that will be the, the main, so, so they call it the ethical issue, but it's mm. actually whether people accept the new technology I or see. not. So it's a matter of perception. Right. rather than real ethics. Okay, great, okay. great. Let's talk a little bit on uh, reproductive technologies right now. Mm-hmm. Now, as it develops, it changes the <coughs> nature of parenthood. Uh, for example, uh, I think that right now we have greater control over the process of procreation. We can select donors to make an embryo and test them to select the one that has optimal genetic potential. Some objected to such procedures, citing that we are interfering with nature and we play God. 
and we and if we allow this, it will promote social inequality and cause a division between those who are genetically enhanced uh, and the rest of us. But what I don't get is that we interfere with nature all the time. Meaning, we build a dam to prevent flood. Uh, we play God when we operate upon a baby with a hole in her heart rather than watch her die. I read an article recently that says that this customizable soft robot that when you fit around. Uh, a heart and helps it beat, it potentially opens new treatment options for people suffering from heart failure. So is this playing God um, since it improved the quality of life for patients? Mm -hmm. um, or is that also unethical? So I just wanted to ask is that why is reproductive technology single out as a culprit of playing God when we are already doing so uh, in other numerous situations in our life? Mm. I, I think that's a good point. You know, uh, always we, uh, doctors and scientists have been accusing, have been accused of playing God. Mm. Well, first thing is that uh, no no doctors I've known that is sane mm. claim that he's God. So True. In, <laughs> well, the insane one are somewhere else, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, so basically, I, I think uh, it's a catch word, a catch phrase that is very catchy, mm. and doctors are playing God. Mm which is a bit derogative and, uh, you know, and uh, accus accusative. Mm. Okay, saying that doctors are doing things they're not supposed to do. Uh, first thing I want to say is that no doctors will say that they are playing God. It's because nobody ever thinks that they can be God. Mm. Okay? God is God because He creates ex helio. Mm. That means He makes things from, He creates material things out of nothing. Mm. Nobody can do that. Mm. No human being can do that. And none of our science can create thing, material things out of nothing. Mm. Mm. Okay? So what doctors are doing is to use what is existent, okay? what has been created by God, mm. you know, using go uh, natural materials, mm. following natural laws, and try to improve it. Mm. And I think that if you, lo if you look into church history, you know, look at Mm, the the greatest uh, theologians, I believe, the greatest mm. theologian, uh, Thomas Aquinas, mm, mm. and his natural theology, okay, which he based on uh, Augustine, <coughs> okay, and uh, who, who himself is based yeah. on uh, Aristotle. <coughs> the natural theology, which uh, Thomas Aquinas says, is actually <coughs> God created the, na the natural world, mm. and we did have natural rules. So as long as you use the natural rules to do uh, to to do what and improve the life of others and love to others, mm. there's nothing wrong with that. Mm, mm. So basically, when uh, people accuse doctors of playing God, mm. we are not here playing God. Mm. We are being co-creator with God. Mm. That means we are using what God has uh, uh, given us and try to improve on it. That's good. Or try to do better on it. Yep. So, so that area of playing God is, uh, I don't think it's true. Mm. It's just an accusation of saying uh, we shouldn't be doing yeah. that. But uh, we are using natural laws and I believe that God created the, uh, with natural laws so that the principle of uh, the domination over the earth, the stewardship, that we are to, mm. part of stewardship is to make what is available and mm. make it better. Mm. And that is where the whole area of uh, medicine mm. and it, is coming about with it, yeah. to make people's life better. Mm. Okay. Uh, you mentioned something about reproductive. Why ah. is it reproductive? Mm. Well, I think reproductive is uh, uh, very important to a lot of people. Mm. Okay. I mean, having children is... Mm, uh, mm, mm. is it? So, uh, I think the, the whole area exploded in about 1977 mm. when the first test still baby was born oh. got an IVF baby that's also when I was born oh. yeah, okay. I'm naturally born <laughs> mm. oh yeah naturally born okay so uh, Louis Brown is the first uh, mm. IVF baby yeah okay and uh, actually she she, she, is, she is married oh. and she has a natural baby girl wow okay okay so it's that, that long now wow. mm. okay so uh, well, uh, people argue is that it's an unnatural way because they took the sp uh, sperm and egg outside, mm. fertilized in the test tube, and then mm. 
put it back into the uh, mother. Mm. Okay, so that is the unnatural way of mm. uh, because the nature is by sex. Mm. Is but actually, we are just using God's principle. I mean, God's uh, uh, fertilization. Only mm. thing is that the the uh, location is uh, mm. uh, uh, different. Okay, so uh, that uh, mm. people have issue with that. Mm. Okay, so when uh, that was an issue, maybe about uh, in 1977. Now it's so commonplace. Mm. Nobody even bat the lid. It says, "Oh, I'm going for IVF." Yeah, you know? yeah. Because when uh, Louis uh, Brown was born, the mother has been married for nine years. Mm. They've been trying for nine years yeah. as a child. Mm. So, so, so what was once a big issue is no mm. longer an issue now. Mm, mm, mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. How about the rest of those like stem cell or um, cloning? Mm. Are, they, are they considered a big issue today? Uh, cloning used to be a big issue. Mm. Okay, in the sense that uh, we were uh, in about say 15 years ago, mm, mm. we were talking about clones. Okay, and uh, making human clones and all that. Okay, and the main point is to produce uh, uh, organ donors. Mm, mm, uh, mm. So, you, if, for example, if you need a kidney, mm, so you mm. produce a clone and then yeah. you get a kidney. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so that was the thing. And then, of course, this is fueled by a lot of movies. I know. Like <laughs> Star Wars, The Clone Wars. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you have this. Uh, people have this perception that when you get a clone, you get a Xerox copy of yourself, <laughs> same age, with yeah. all your memories, <laughs> a duplicate copy. Is it? But actually, when you, you clone a, a, a human baby, if it ever happens, mm -hmm. it will be a baby. And you have to grow the same age, you know, same, mm -hmm. same as mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So by the time the clone is your age, it will not be you. Exactly. It, it will be a person like yourself. Yeah. Okay. But cloning is actually not a big thing now because with uh, stem cells research and all that we actually clone we have clone organs mm. okay so you find that people hardly talk about clonings anymore more of cloning of organs or parts uh, of stem the cells, body. Or, uh, stem all cells right. and all that now i asked about cloning because in biblical thought mm. um, each human life has unique human identity because of divine image bestowed on mm. us so with that possibility there's a lot of talk about possibility and success of cloning human beings and um, I felt that this discussion could change our understanding of what it means to be made in God's image. Mm. Um, um, the question then would become, are we seizing God's rightful place as creator and uh, like the building of the Tower of Babel, this is pushing human autonomy to the extreme. Those days, only God could do it and now we are actually cloning um, someone. Um, and uh, whose image would this someone be? Mm. Uh, based upon, mm. yeah, yeah. Plus, I think uh, we have to go back to uh, what you mentioned about image of God, mm -hmm. the image uh, mm -hmm. deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, there are a lot of. Uh, I mean, you, you study theology, you know that there are a lot of uh, different ways to understand yeah. image of God. The most common way is to think that God is hum have a human shape. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that when you say. We are making God uh, clone is a image of God is a physical mm, human, mm. Uh, but God is spirit. Okay, so we are not making spirit; mm. we are making a human being. Correct. Okay, so in that sense, we, we are actually the image of God. My understanding is, so, is that it is the attribute of God. Mm. Okay, to be like Christ, to love our neighbor, and to help others. Mm. Okay, mm. so so. That is the image of God. Mm. Okay, so we are when we talk about cloning, we are just putting producing a physical being. All right. So that's the thing. Okay, and uh, personally, I think that there are limits. God has produced uh, in His natural limits. Mm. Okay, they find that uh, they are able to clone. Uh, maybe uh, Dolly mm. in nineteen seventy seven. Mm. Yep. Okay, uh, the ship. Mm. Okay, but when you try for higher primates, you find that they cannot clone the higher primates. Okay. So maybe God's law has made it impossible to clone humans. Yeah. And now that you say that there is way to make a uh, kidney and all that mm. without cloning a person mm. as a whole, mm. uh, maybe that is the direction that the technology yeah. will go forward, right? Well, it is the direction that you're going yeah. forward now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's interesting you bring in that image of God in a sense that uh, it's not so much about that physical that God create, but a person 
even if cloning of human beings is successful in the future, as long as that person grow up bearing his image of knowing who God is, loving him and loving one another, that is bearing God's image, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. That's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Um, the, the, the question that I would like to ask right now is about consistency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our ethical obligations cuts both ways too, you know, as mm -hmm. we recognize it. Just as it's wrong to cut someone's life short by euthanasia, I uh, we also know that it's wrong to not intervene to make the possibility for healthier and longer life. Mm. Um, so what do you make of these ethics of omission in this regard? How can we be consistent through how with our ethics mm. uh, as we uh, decide on what can we do, what can we not do? Yeah, yeah. because I think ethics is, all, is always more than just individuals. Mm. Often we think of ethics of uh, say whether this person uh, we can do euthanasia on this mm, person mm, mm, or on mm, that mm, person. Mm, 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 mm. But ethics is actually has a wider role yep. of, uh, say, maybe pharmaceutical products. Mm, mm. Like what, what, what happens is right, there's a drug mm. that is uh, can cure a disease, but it's too expensive for mm. the population or mm. the poor. Okay, So is it ethical mm. to withhold such drug from the, the people who need it? Okay, And that mm. is a, a million dollar question mm, mm. because these drugs are making billions for, for the pharmaceutical company. That's true. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so, so that means ethics have to step and see the bigger picture. Mm. That means you have to go involve not only individual but also uh, organizations, uh, lobbying bodies and even governments mm. to mm. come in and step in and say, no, you can, yes, we can help you to make money but you cannot make too much money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, okay. they do need money yep, don't yep. Have to survive, but yep. is that excessive and uh, profit should not be allowed. Mm, mm. And then I suppose you have a board to govern that kind of decision. Yeah, uh. and then you will allow, uh, say maybe these uh, two expensive drugs to make cheaper, to be available to. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, also it's like, for example, if you have a vaccine that is can cure a certain disease, but mm. not given because mm. it's too expensive. So ah. only the rich can afford it, mm. and the poor is not. Yeah, and, mm. and, and that will touch on justice issue, right? Yeah, it, uh, because ethics is about uh, autonomy, mm. it's about uh, beneficent, mm -hmm. it's about beneficent, mm. and it's about justice. Mm. Okay, so these are the four pillars of uh, yeah. ethics. So when we consider or make decision about what is permissive or whether we should venture into it. So this four angle of ethics should mm. come into play instead mm. of just whether it benefit me or the other. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's mm. good. So there are many factors. Yeah. Great. A as a Christian, uh, I, I tend to see it more than just what the four I mentioned. Mm. I also see it as the uh, sovereignty, sovereignty of God. Mm. Okay, that means uh, God is in charge. Yeah. Okay, the way of love our stewardship yeah, yeah. and also how we uh, uh, love one another. Okay. The way of love and how we may, uh, act out this love. Okay. Mm. Now, uh, we will right now talk a little bit about Christian's response. Now, Christians are pretty loud in ethics and what should be done and what we shouldn't even go into. Uh, for fear of dangers, risk, and irreversibility to safer grounds. But some of our arguments are pretty flawed. You know, as you go around uh, churches and talk to Christians, right, sometimes they, 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 they talk about ethics as if uh, uh, they know it all. And um, sometimes I feel these flawed arguments could have also prevented us from exploring avenues that are potentially vital to human beings. Uh, would you be able to cite the commonly held beliefs uh, and arguments among uh, Christian community that are flawed and are in need of corrections? Uh, I, I guess one of the key problems with our churches is that we are very inward looking. Mm. Okay, we are, we are uh, very spiritual in our ghettos. Okay, and then we come every Sunday, mm. we have a good time, mm. and then we, then we go back into the world, mm. okay, which is a bad place. And then we go back every Sunday to be, be cleansed again. Mm. So this inwardness keeps us from dealing with issues mm. of the world outside. Yeah. So most of the time, we are talking about our spiritual life, which is good. And I'm all for spiritual growth mm -hmm. and all that, and our relationship with God. Mm. But we still have to live in the world. Okay. So 
how does the uh, most Christian response to to new technology and all that? First is that usually they will say no. Mm. I think uh, one of the issues I always face is that uh, Christian are are reactive mm. rather than proactive. Okay. That means they react to anything new without knowing the the, the reason why they're reacting. <laughs> just okay. because it's new, okay, and it doesn't fit into mm. the idea of what should be correct. Mm. And unfortunately, most of, a lot of our theology are still based on the uh, 12th century. Oh. Okay, yeah. medieval, uh, middle, age, middle mm. age, uh, dark ages type of theology. So we have not already advanced uh, to Thomas Aquinas mm. <laughs> okay, in, uh, on, in, on nature theology. Mm. So it's always no, okay, until uh, such time it, uh, where they are forced to accept that. Okay. And uh, the, the resistance comes because of lack of knowledge or asking the right question mm. or being encouraged to write it. Mm. Ask the right question. As I said, they are all very inward looking. So it is, everything has to be spiritual. Mm. You know, if it's not spiritual, then we do not deal with it. Okay. But in a way, we get, get back into you know, mass culture mm. and we tend to follow mass culture. Mm. And culture, uh, whatever the culture do, we t it becomes part of the church. All right. So it defines us instead of what we believe defines yes. the culture and how we do yeah. it. So for example, earlier we talked about the IVF. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So initially, uh, it was very negatively. Mm. Okay. I, I even have somebody coming to me for counseling mm, mm, mm. because he went to the pastor and he says, you know, I think uh, we have been married for about 10 years, I think. No, this, yes, IVF, should we go? Mm. No, the pastor got angry. He oh. says that God made you barren for a reason. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you must. You know, repent and ask God for that. Wow. And when she uh, finally went and got IVF, the pastor actually told her that your child is a spawn of the devil. <gasps> Can you imagine that yeah. effect on the poor lady? Poor couple. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, I'm not saying that all pastors read like that, mm. but some of them do. Mm. Okay, and it, I believe there is the lack of, uh, mm, uh, for, of uh, education, so to speak. Mm. I mean, uh, to be fair, not many people know about the foundations mm. of what's IVF, what is mm. test tube mm. babies. Yep, yep. You know, it is always doctor playing God. Correct. Yeah. So I, th I, I, mm. I believe that there is a need for for the church to be engaged in society. Mm, okay. okay. To to be reactive rather than proactive. So a lot of them. I mean, as you move around churches a lot. Mm. Um, they are, we are not very cognizant on these issues, right? No, we are not. Yeah. Okay. And then when we read, we almost read what uh, appeals and uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, we enforce our own traditional belief and, and what we come to understand. Yes. Wow. Um, are these issues even um, talked about uh, in churches? Mm. I mean, uh, Holy Light is blessed to have you, but mm. what about other churches that... Uh, might not have people of your expertise to, to go mm. around. I mean, you go to churches to preach yeah, a lot. Uh, uh. So do they, do they talk about uh, this uh, kind of issues? Most of them do not. Okay, mm. but you'd be surprised there's one church in uh, Johor Bahru mm -hmm. that actually invites me about once or twice a year oh. to talk about, you know, he says, it's a Sunday sermon, uh, abortion. Oh, okay. Homosexuality. Wow, okay. Okay. Uh, Euthanasia. Mm, mm, mm. As a so Sunday Sunday, I said, mm. sure, are you sure you want me to come mm, mm. and preach on Sunday on Euthanasia? Mm, mm. He said, yeah, we want to hear about that. Mm. So I, I'm very, I respect that church very okay. much, the eldership of the church. But, but, I mean, based on your experience, since mm. you have done it, um, there's also risk involved when is the short period of pulpit to handle a huge yeah. topic like, yeah. like euthanasia or LGBT, mm. like you said. Mm. Uh, how has your experience been? Uh, the the using the sermon, I usually, especially for this type, I usually allow, uh, I, I tell them organize a, a question and answer period oh, okay. after the. So the you do it after that, like a forum, yeah, okay, like after, a after the yeah. yeah, and then I I think uh, I I'll go I offer seminars. 
on mm. euthanasia, yeah. LGBT, yeah. Uh, abortion and all That's that. helpful, isn't it? Instead yeah. of just like a 30-40 minutes. Yeah. Because sometimes what we hear is that a speaker could have very well have their stance and their stance come out and it might um, marginalize some community who might not feel the same mm. and they thought it's the end of that of that topic. Mm. But by having Q&A or forum or seminar, mm. it, it helps to lengthen the discussion and allow different voices to also bear in the discussion. True. And, and I always uh, find that the, the Q&A is actually more fruitful mm. because people are voicing their, their, yeah. their, the question they actually want to ask. Yes, yes. Which they, have, they don't know where to ask. Yeah, yeah. And they are voicing their hurts and pains mm. and uh, fears. Okay. So, so we need avenues. I think mm. as a church, we need to have uh, as it's a safe space exactly, yeah. for us to discuss such issues. Yeah. And discuss it out loud. Yeah. Because some of these questions are actually maybe upon everyone's heart, but because there's no space to actually mm. talk about it. Yeah, because yeah. as I said, the church live in the world. Okay, whether we, we, we are aware of it or not, mm. technology becomes part of us. Mm. And, and if we're not careful, Okay, instead of being the our, our, ours being the master of technology, mm. technology masters us. Mm, mm. Okay, and become our God. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Good point. Mm. Now, as a Christian yourself, what would you think is the singular um, most important thing to get right uh, first to aid in our evaluation and weighing between the immense benefits of these new technologies uh, and their ethical concerns? Mm-hmm. I mean, as a Christian, uh, the principle of the, uh, the whether it goes against the laws of God or not, or uh, the sovereignty of God. Mm. Actually, I, ha I have a sort of uh, uh, approach okay. which I developed mm. over the years, mm. and uh, I'm going to write a book on it. Oh, great! <laughs> okay. Share a little bit first. <laughs> uh, so, so the 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 is at least first is that if. Any new practice or technology to evaluate whether it's acceptable to mm. the church or Christian or not is that first does the Bible taste have anything about it? Okay, so first first always and always look to the Bible. Mm. Mm. Okay, does the Bible have any verses, any uh, teaching on this? Mm. Okay, of course most of the time we don't you don't see we take stem cells yeah, yeah. or uh, enhancement of in course the not. Bible. <laughs> <coughs> so. First, you look at that, mm. okay, and uh, whatever verses we have or proof text we want must be exercised properly. Mm. Okay, we just can't pick True. up one verse and say Correct. this is a. So if the the uh, number one, number two is that if the Bible doesn't have any uh, proof text, is there any rationale in the Bible for it? Oh. Okay, that means we look at the, that means we instead of specific verses or passage, we look at the canonical reading of the Bible mm, mm, as mm. Bible biblical teaching. And as a whole, does it have anything to do with this? Mm. Okay. And uh, third question I will ask is that: Is there any biblical or theological basis against it? All right. Okay. Because if there is nothing for it, is it against mm, it? Mm, mm. Then after that, I will say, look around and let the uh, uh, the world and see what is happening. Mm, mm. Okay. That means, in other words, dig into the facts. Of this, what are the understanding basic right. facts of this? Mm. Because I believe in God's specific revelation in the Bible. Also, we could go to His mm. general revelation, mm. which mm. is the world. Yep. Okay, and what is the uh, understanding of that procedure, mm. or and what is the public doing about it? Okay. And so you have a certain guidelines. Uh, yeah, okay. Of our approach, whether we will accept wow. that or not. Oh, that. mm. That's good. Because I think these guidelines are helpful because mm. the new kind of biotechnology is not just going to end yeah. as what we have discussed today. There's mm. just going to be newer and newer stuff come out and having mm. these approaches will help mm. us uh, mm. into uh, know what is appropriate to be explored and implemented. Mm. Okay, last question would uh, for you, Doctor, is what do you think the church uh, could do more in helping um, the community to navigate these hotly contested debates? whether in the West or, or coming to here, um, especially in our local communities, um, what would you think that uh, the role of the church should be? Uh, personally, I felt that the, the church should be more reactive. That means to don't wait until the thing is upon us, then we start reacting. With it. Mm. It means being proactive means we have to be 
involved in education of mm. our members. Mm. Okay. First and foremost, we must know what we are talking about yeah. or what we want to Correct. work. Okay. And then we must be able to love our neighbour. That means uh, how, how, in what way can we use this technology to help our mm. neighbours. Mm. I think that will be the two main things that I have. Okay. You know, any new technologies have it's a two-edged sword, as you say. Okay. Uh, even though technology are not neutral by itself, but mm. it ha how it's been used. So saying no is without offering alternative is mm. not an answer. Correct. Mm. That's true. Mm. Wise words for our audience today. Thank you, Dr. Alex, Thank for you. gracing our show. We pray mm. that uh, best effort for new book and hopefully a revision. Um, but till then, um, we will see you next time. Thank you for tuning in. Got questions? Connect with us. Send us a tweet or an email.